You're in the loop. We're here to discuss the ups, downs, and sideways of the sport of figure skating, and maybe give you plus five GOE along the way. Let's introduce this week's host. Hi, I'm Yogita, and I just want all the Japanese ladies to go to the world. You can find me on Twitter, at Lulayorum. Hey, I'm Nina, and I, sadly, am no longer on break, but I'm still recovering from JNets. You can find me on Twitter, at Yonkai Tenpu. Hi, I'm Kai, and I'm glad that Reliving Japanese Nationals is breaking up the back-to-work slump. I'm on Twitter, at Masi Zing. And I'm Sam. I hope everybody's enjoying this bit of a break. You can follow me at QuadLuxMe for Edge Call on Twitter. All right. To start things off with the news, the 2019 Grand Prix Final has been moved to Torino, Italy. Originally, it was announced to be in Strasbourg, France. And in some unfortunate news, Karen Chen has announced that she will be sitting out U.S. Nationals due to the foot injury that's been plaguing her all season. So we wish her a very speedy recovery from that, and we hope to see her back in competition very soon. Some exciting news, Han Yan from China has confirmed that he will be coming back to competition next season. I'm very excited to see him back on the ice. Oh, I've missed his axles. Well, it looked as much fun to skate as it was to watch wherever you're watching from. Okay, let's talk about Japanese nationals. To so just quickly go through our pairs and dance medalists. Um, for pairs, the gold medalist is Muse Suzaki and Ruichi Hihara because they were the only one competing because their other competitor withdrew. And in dance, we have Misato Gomatsubara and Tim Kaledo in gold, Kiria Hiriyama and Axel Lamas in silver, and Mio Ida and Kenta Ishibashi in bronze. And they were also the only three people competing. At the very least, JSF was able to hand out all three medals to dance. Why won't JSF actually build a foundation for pairs and dance? They have so many great ladies and men in singles who will never compete internationally, who could potentially be great at pairs and dance. Money. It's all about the money. <laughs> But seriously, no, that's really it. They they have no real incentive to do it at this point because they don't see it giving them anything in return because there's no, like, immediate gains. Because to be able to do something like that where, like, to really create disciplines, they would have to invest in lower levels and not just, like, poach single skaters and move them over because then you're, not, you're still not really getting the results you would need. But, yeah, it would be great. Especially when you consider, like, if they had, like, just some a middling dance team, like, not, like, middling, but, like, a, like, high-placing, uh, like, top 15 dance team or, like, a top 20 pairs team, they could conceivably win, like, gold medals for the Olympic team event because their singles are that good. Yeah, it takes a lot of time to build a top pairs team or a top dance team. It's not like singles where you can kind of just drop them into competition and they can start winning immediately. That usually doesn't happen with pairs and dance. It can take, like five years or even more just to have a team like be able to build that dynamic and that like awareness of each other to where they can actually go out and start winning stuff so right now the immediate return for developing pairs and dance is really low so there's less incentive to do it but still like team japan could be sweeping olympic team medals like sam said and it's just kind of disappointing that they're not right now jsf really needs to start playing like the long game here because they have such great men's and ladies. If there's anything I've learned from previous ITL episodes, it's that apparently junior ice dance is where it's at, so JSF, get on that. Yeah, they have like no junior ice dancers. I saw, I don't remember any junior ice dancers from Japan. They only had one pairs team too, I think. Yeah, I do remember a Japanese junior pairs team, but I couldn't, I can't remember if there was a Japanese junior ice dance team during the junior Grand Prix. There probably was. On the other hand, where Japan does invest a lot of money is in the men's field. (laughs) (laughs) So we had our men's medalist, Shoma Uno, in first, Daisuke Takahashi in second, and Keiji Tanaka in third. I love that podium so much. Yeah, let's just get right into the meat of this episode and start talking about Shoma. So I want to know who I have to fight to rescue all of the ankles this season. Because he sprained his right ankle in practice before the short program and then decided to compete anyway. Ironically, finally had the clean short program he's been chasing all season and obviously he won. And reports say he's going to need about two weeks to heal, which should technically still give him enough time to get ready for four continents. But 
two weeks is. I am very questionable about that two weeks figure because I suspect that it means two weeks to be competitive and not two weeks to heal, which is not a great position to be in, especially when you're kind of now the top man going to Four Continents, and I think that he takes that on himself and is propping himself up, or is using that to keep himself up, especially because he technically could have pulled out of Nationals and been given a bye, but didn't want to. I, I worry that he's just going to push himself at Four Continents to try and prove something. I don't know if I'd go that far. For me, Shoma's not something I'm, somebody I'm necessarily worried about mentally. He's the kid who, like, couldn't do a triple axel, so he was, like, went and did a quad in spite of it. So I'm not necessarily worried about him, like, not being able to, like, push through stuff like this where he's feeling a little bit down or he's not getting the results he wanted. That said, I agree full-heartedly on the injury front or, like, whatever it's going on with him. I just am so fed up with sports culture mentality where it's, like, a good thing to push through pain even though you don't have to. Like, that kind of stuff t doesn't really make ne sense to me, and I hope he's putting himself in a good enough position to where he will be safe and he will be okay no matter what he decides to do. Yeah, I also just don't understand why JSF is even sending him the Four Continents since Worlds is in Japan this season. Um, and I feel like they would want to make a better showing at Worlds and have their two top men take the podium instead of risking further injury for Shoma by letting him go to the Four Continents. Yeah, Four Continents is frankly not a priority for someone in Shoma's position right now. It's like a smaller competition if you want to put it in the context of Worlds. So definitely what they should be prioritizing is having him be healthy in time for Worlds and not pushing him to go to these competitions where he doesn't really need to be at. I do wonder if there would have been a bit of a commotion if they'd given two men buys, if not competing at nationals. Like, I, I, I was wondering if that would cause some strife. I'm sure some people would complain, but like, it's Shoma and Yuzuru. They're the gold and silver medalists of the Olympics. Nobody would be like, oh, they don't deserve that. Also, he would have been pulling out like mid-competition, so it's not as if like, there would be any way for somebody to be able to, like, point and be like, oh, he just did it because he didn't want to go. You know what I mean? Like, we all saw it. It's not like somebody could be like, no, like, he just didn't want to be there and, like, make it about that. So I, I don't know if that was necessarily the case where they'd be like, oh, well, user is not here, so you have to still compete. Like, or, like, fans themselves would get upset because it happened while he was there. You know what I mean? Wait, if Shoma wasn't there, could we have had Daisuke Takahashi national champion? We probably would have. Probably. I feel like he does take a lot of that pressure onto himself, though, especially when Yuzuru has withdrawn to kind of be, like, the pull to encourage the audience to come. Well, maybe less so this year, because Daisuke was also competing. But generally, I think that's kind of the mentality that he has going into competitions like this, where kind of, like, the main man is gone. So he's like, oh, I have to really, like, kind of step up for both of us. And that that is concerning. I mean, he did say in the press con that he doesn't really think he's won any of his three titles. I, I, I'm just gonna, like, throw it out there. No, like, I would feel that way, too. Like, it's not necessarily a bad thing to be hard on yourself, harder on yourself than you should be. I mean, I know I do that all the time and sometimes it's not necessarily healthy, but I don't think thinking like, hey, like, yeah, I won, but like my top competitor wasn't here. So it doesn't feel as if a, as big of a win to me as maybe it would have if he has been is necessarily a bad thing or indicative of like an issue, I guess. Yeah, I feel like anybody who's like won something because Yuzuru had to pull out probably also feels like that. Like they accept like, oh, I won, but they also like know that what would have happened if Yuzuru was actually here. And that's just like a common feeling. It, I don't think Shoba has like terrible mentality issues. I agree with Sam in that regard. I think it's just what if scenarios that we shouldn't keep talking about. <laughs> Let's move on to our silver medalist, the ever so wonderful Daisuke Takahashi. I love him. <laughs> that's it. We just love Daisuke Takahashi. We're happy that he came back and, like, graced us with his presence. I'm glad that he didn't uh, murder himself by doing that, those terrifying quads that we saw. Well, he went for it. He went for it and popped it. The one in practice that he did was really nice. <laughs> the quad toe looked nice. The quad flip did not. Well, thankfully, I don't think he wasn't doing them at Nats. He was doing them, like, in practice videos there, but I don't remember him seeing him d1 i was just terrified going into the short program and then i was like okay i can rest easy now well his triple toe in his free looked like it was meant to be a quad to me no it was he popped the quad toe into a triple so he did go for one of them 
But I mean, it's like, does anyone really have a nice quad flip? Eh. No, the the quad flip doesn't exist. Like, let's be real. <laughs> no one's really done a quad flip. Rest in pieces, Shoba and Nate. Anyway, his short program was just so exquisite. It was probably my favorite program of the entire event in men's because it just brings you back to the age where Daisuke was like the mega star of Japanese skating. And after the short program where he posted like a, a nearly 90 score, People were saying, wow, he could actually be named to, like, Worlds or Four Continents this year. And just the way the program is choreographed and laid out is just so – it just highlights his strength so well because he leaves his step sequence until the end. So he's gotten all of his jumps out of the way, and then he could just focus on the performance. And just the way he uses his edges, like, the depth of his edges to convey how wistful and, like, longing the piece is is just so phenomenal and yet so subtle – and you can actually see how Dai has influenced Shoma skating because he also uses his upper body, especially his arms and his back, so effectively to highlight musical accents in the piece without seeming kind of like sluggish and slow, which can easily happen when you're skating to something that's so melodic and kind of smooth throughout. And uh, just such a good program. I'm very upset that we're probably not going to see it again this season. It really yeah. just shows, like, what the meaning of the word musical is. Yeah, exactly. Like, f- for me, my favorite part of that program is, like Kite was saying, with the step sequence, how it explodes out in the beginning and then calms down and becomes more subtle. And you can see his movements changing with each mood change in the music and, like, stuff like that. It's just absolutely beautiful to watch. Yeah, that step sequence was probably the highlight of the entire men's event for me. Like, I've gone back and I've rewatched it several times it just like brings you in and like takes you away from like your the real world it, I, I don't really have words to describe it but it's just this feeling of magic and I'm so happy we got to actually witness this especially in, in the current age the age of all of these the quad jumpers who focus more on getting those quads and less on like the choreographic elements of their programs seeing these such programs that are so musical and just gorgeous to watch yeah no the, the moment right before he goes into the step sequence where it's just like pauses and like lets the moment sit and savor and then just throws himself into it for me i'd say it was the second best part of japanese nationals only because his free skate choreo sequence really really slays me he struggled with his jumps quite a bit in the free skate and they still were originally going to s- assign him to worlds and possibly four continents and he actually turned those spots down which partly was due to the fact that he just realistically is not in a place where he can be competing internationally and getting good results like his jumps were kind of all over the place in the free skate but also he said that he wanted to give the younger skaters a chance to compete at the spring championships which is of course very admirable for him to say even though Stealing spots, quote-unquote, is not a thing. And none of the men going to Worlds are rookies anyway. Like, KG is 24. He's been there several times now. But it was it was a nice sentiment on his behalf to kind of step aside and let the younger generation really fill in the gaps. Yeah, and he did what he said he was going to do from the beginning. Like, when he announced his comeback, he was like, I'm here for nationals. I'm not necessarily looking to compete internationally. So, like, stealing spots isn't a thing and Dai stuck onto his word and did what he said he was going to do. And that is what it is. He did say that he's going to continue competing next season, so maybe we'll see him internationally again next season, which I would love to see. Um, but as long as we have more Daisuke Takahashi, I'm happy. Yeah, exactly. And, like, honestly, he probably wasn't ready to compete at Worlds this year anyway. I think he said that himself. Yeah. He also has not actually competed internationally this season, so he would have had to go to a smaller competition to even get the score minimums that he would need to be able to compete at world. So it just wasn't really a feasible goal for him this season, I think, but he does plan to stick around. So here's hoping that next season he'll actually be able to compete internationally, even if it's not at worlds. Give him a grand prix assignment. Give him the NHK spot. If you want to sell tickets, JSF, that's the way to go about it. (laughs) Oh, those tickets would be selling like hotcakes. Okay. Let's move on to our bronze medalist, Keiji Tanaka. He finally did it. Like, I think this was like his cleanest free skate this season. Oh, by far. <laughs> Which also says a lot because it was also riddled with pops and too many double toes. But 
he managed to do what he came to do and win that coveted spot to Worlds. He has a knack for showing up at nationals and like skating just well enough to get the spot he needs. <laughs> it's kind of uncanny. I, I still remember last year at Nats where he landed more quads than Shoma did. Yeah, that was great. You know, we always worry about KG and his ability to rotate and land on one foot, but you can really put it out there when it counts sometimes. I mean, yeah, it was the cleanest skate he's had all season by far, but like Yogita said, it was still pretty error-packed as far as popping and not counting the double toes. And so you need to keep in mind that a skate like this would probably still bury him at Worlds, but it's good enough to get on the Worlds team. And that was his immediate goal of the season, was to make Worlds. So good for him. He did finally pull it together, and I'm hoping that we do see a good showing from him at Worlds as well. And four continents. So moving on to a competitor who unfortunately did not have the skates that he quite wanted, Kazuki Tomono. There was some commentary that I saw about how Kazuki was robbed score-wise, especially in program component scores. And I personally would love to know where you think he should have been scored higher. Because I would personally probably put his performance and interpretation a little bit higher in the free skate. But even then, not by much. Because he really was not selling the performance as well as he did at, like, Russ Telecom Cup. And he only got step sequence two on that really, like, hype river dance bit that everyone's all excited about. And he also had a major mistake in the short program. So I would argue that these scores are actually pretty on par with what he gets internationally. And I don't think that he put out a performance at nationals that was deserving of higher scores. Yeah, I agree with that completely. And I would just generally say that I don't know, always get the the call for P- Kazuki to get higher PCS as it is. Because I, I, I think normally, no matter the performance, the only thing that could really rise is his interpretation and performance. And most other th- components, like skating skills, composition transitions, there's not something you can really do with that. They're not going to change. He's the skater that he is. He, he He's... Not the best skating school wise, but he's great a great performer, and I, I'll give him that. It's great, but it's also important to point out that Kazuki is not any less inconsistent than KG is. I mean, he won a, a medal on the Grand Prix, yes, but he won the uh, medal at um, Rostelcom Cup with a, a field that did not perform very well, which are all important things to point out when you're considering spots like, things like this. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that well, I, I love him to pieces. I don't want anybody to take me saying like, oh, his PCS shouldn't actually be higher, at, at, even though we all want him, th- him to do well. But yeah, I love his programs. I love him to pieces. It's just I don't necessarily always agree with, with the idea that he should be getting much higher scores just because he did well at Worlds last year. I think they were hoping that he would get uh, the home iced boost because it was Japanese nationals, but I don't necessarily think that even if he were going to be getting that sort of boost, this performance would be necessarily the one that was deserving of that. Yeah, and that also seems like that Japanese nationals actually gives home ice boosts. Yeah, there's an impression, it seems, that one fifth place finish at Worlds means that his score should suddenly be exploding, especially his PCS. And that he should be scoring close to die in performance, which I don't understand at all. That's pretty ridiculous, in my opinion. And that would do him a pretty big disservice during this period of growth as a skater, where he is developing his musicality and his artistry and his skating skills to suddenly be just throwing huge scores at him and giving off the impression that, yes, this is where he just needs to stay for the rest of his career. He doesn't need to improve at all. And that's not where he is right now yeah and it's important to say that at the end of the day one result isn't the hallmark of your career like doing well at one competition shouldn't set you up to then necessarily be like solidly the third japanese man just because you happen to do well the one time and then just ignore the fact that like yeah KG and Kazuki are both equally as inconsistent. Also, I mean, it's true that his fifth place finish at Worlds was another competition where everyone died. Like, died hard. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And it was a post-Olympic Worlds. Let's not forget that. So, people were missing. But, I mean, he's going to have further experience. He's going to do fine. Yeah, he is going to Four Continents. That's That's a competition that's good for boosting your reputation. Yeah, and I hope he does well. I do like his programs this season, and he hasn't really skated either of them clean yet so i hope that he has he's able to do that at four continents 
Okay, let's talk about some of the other men. Koshiro Shimada. Koshiro's momentum after meddling at the Junior Grand Prix Final did him really well here. He was third after the short, and the top three after the short was, like, amazing, because it was Shoma, Dai, and Koshiro, and, like, across, it was a like, cross-generational top three. That was spectacular. Um, his free, unfortunately, was riddled with a lot of mistakes, which pushed him down to 11th after in the free, but he ended up as fifth overall, which should hopefully be a strong position for him to be in and will hopefully help push him forward during the Junior World Championships, where he is will probably be hoping to podium again. Not in love with the free still. I don't think he has quite the expressiveness that he needs to pull off a tango program just yet as a skater, but I'm very glad for him to be getting these good results and I have faith that Stefan Lambiel knows what he's doing and is going to help him get good results in the future as well. When in doubt, trust Stefan. <laughs> and I also just wanted to mention Shin Sada really quickly. Um, he had done really well at Junior Nationals um, and he had the second highest technical score of the men in the free skate, but he finished ninth, which slightly confused me. Compared to Junior Nats, he received 8 points lower in PCS, and even though he did have a fall in his free skate, I don't think his PCS should have dropped that much. Yeah, I don't know what the judges were doing while he was skating, if they like just took a coffee break or something, but literally <laughs> every all of the other junior men who had competed at Junior Nats got higher PCS at senior nats, except for Shun. So I would really love to know what was going through their minds when they scored him, if they just hit the wrong key or something. But yeah, that was ridiculous. I don't I don't know why. Well, let's talk about who wasn't here, Yuzuru Hanyu. Unfortunately, he's still out with the ankle injury that he sustained at Rest Telecom in November. JSF made what some thought was a pretty interesting choice to not send him to four continents, especially since his rehab period is basically over by now. And we do have confirmation that he's back on the ice in training. I I don't know if that was JSF's choice or if it was Hanyu's team saying that he wasn't ready for Four Continents and just wants to go to Worlds. But I'm happy that Hanyu is taking the time that he needs to get fully recovered. And we all know that he's coming for that world title, no matter what. Yeah, it's a home world for him, so I'm sure he does feel that added impetus to really go out there and give the performance of his life and win the world title on home ice, like his first world title. And we know he can take an extended break or rehab period and come to a major championship and win and be fine, so it's not out of a realm of possibility. So, let's talk about our ladies! Yay! In gold, we have Kaori Sakamoto. Uh, silver, Rika Kihira, and bronze, Satoko Miyahara. <sighs> I love all of them, and I'm very happy that Kaori is the national champion, but I want to know why half the judges saw her go from her spiral sequence in her free skate into a triple loop, which she just floats on and only gave it a plus three. What are they on? One quick thing about her spiral sequence, she messed it up again, and I like have It's so beautiful, you can't tell. No, you can tell. Uh, You can see her going to grab her blade and missing it. (laughs) (laughs) But like the judges, I don't think the judges saw because like her DOE on it was like really high compared to when she messed it up at Helsinki. To be fair though, it wasn't as bad this time as Helsinki. Helsinki was pretty funny. Like she was laughing in the middle of it. (laughs) But yes, I, I, Kaori's, I think, has the best jump technique of all of the Japanese ladies outside of her flats. She looks like a, like a butterfly, just, like, casually lifting herself off the ice. Like, all of her jumps should be getting, like, plus fours and fives. Judges, if you give her, like, anything less, like, why? Yeah, it's, like, the general trend to ask, like, what's going on with her Chiyoi every time she competes, because it doesn't make any sense. She hits every bullet point on every single jump, again, besides the LUDs, and it's just, like... Her double axle, triple toe, double toe in the free is, like, chef's kiss perfect. She got, like, plus 4.8 on her solo back counter double axle. So finally the judges are waking up, seeing the light. There was a bit of controversy regarding her win in general over Rika, but Rika was further down after the short program. She was in fifth, 
and she had a lot of catching up to do. So she, had she landed her triple axel, she probably would have won the whole event. I think it merits a fair point that Cowdy would be pretty unlikely to get these scores internationally because she was clean at Skate America and she was clean at Helsinki. And in the free skate, she only got 142 and 140 respectively. And she got 152 here, which personally I think is much closer to the performance that she's actually putting out. But the international judges haven't really been rewarding her for that. Kadi often gets lowballed in PCS because she got 67 at Grand Prix Helsinki, 68 at Grand Prix Final, even with a fall. And here she got 73, even though I'd say this was actually weaker performatively. So I think that her scores are more accurate. So that's why I hope and pray that being Japanese champion going into four continents and going into worlds is going to boost her scoring potential on the international stage because now she has a national title to back it up. Although I'm frankly not super optimistic because Satoko still got robbed in program components. I was going to say, Satoko's not the greatest precedent. I have no hope regarding her getting scored for her PCS correctly, but I do... Her jumps deserve the GOE that they deserve, and she's not getting it internationally. And, like, not even just within the Japanese ladies. I think she ha- she's, like, one of the top five ladies internationally with the best jump technique, and she's not getting scored for that. So hopefully this will boost her GOE as it should be and not actually in the twos and threes like it currently is on the international stage. I just want her to do really well, guys. So I'm really thankful that we have Kari Sakamoto, Japanese national champion. Her reaction when she saw her score was everything. Don't forget it was right after like the world's cutest dab. Dabbing (laughs) in the kiss and cry. She's been taking lessons from Nam, clearly. No one should be taking those lessons from (laughs) Nam. It's okay. No, just like, no, they should be able to have their fun and then like, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, they can rewatch these and just cringe. Okay. Rika Kihira, our silver medalist. So she definitely came in as the favorite to win. She was hot off her win at Grand Prix Final. Um, but unfortunately, she did have some boot problems coming into the event. And it really seemed like her nerves what were what undid her in the short program. And so she missed the triple axle, kind of was pretty far outside the circle and fell on her side coming out. And so she was a little too far back to catch up to the leaders after the short program, even though she did have a clean free skate. And frankly, I'm growing pretty concerned that she's going to miss the triple axle in the short program, which she really needs to be a contender at Worlds. Because if she misses that at Worlds, it's going to bury her so far that she's probably not going to be able to get back up onto the podium even. And we saw at Grand Prix Final, conversely, that she can build enough of a lead in the short program to be very hard to catch. And I still think that a clean Rika is unbeatable, but so far she's only been clean in both segments once this season. So I'm a little bit worried. Yeah, for me, I feel like her short is really the issue for herself. Like she's proved again and again that she can rise back from a bad short and give an outstanding free skate. And I don't think having a bad short will necessarily put her out of the running for gold of worlds but it'll definitely set her back a lot i think it also depends on the reliability of the other top competitors yeah and also what group she ends up being in like if she messes up in the short but she's still in the final group i don't think she'll have any issues like vaulting back up to first yeah i think most i for me i don't think her short program suits her at all i don't think claire de lune is the right music for her and i think part of that is making it Uh, part of like that disconnect between her mentality and her music might be giving her some issues because I don't think it's really matched to her style I think her free skate is absolutely brilliant and every time she's done it I've just been like this is magic but I've never felt that way about her short program yeah she's such a powerful skater and she kind of needs that very powerful modern music to showcase her strengths which Claire DeLune really is not doing for her this season but it's her first senior season. I'm going to give her a pass on that. I was going to say, I actually really like her short. I think it's pretty, and I think it can be good for her, but I think it seems to be very difficult for her to get in the mindset to perform it properly. And I mean, I think there are definitely... I think she still has to work on her nerves problem, as we've seen with the triple axel in the short. And also, I mean, you could see going into her free skate that her movements were a lot more frantic, and her... 
Uh, she didn't hold her lines as well, especially right at the beginning when she has those really cool um, hand sweepy movements. And I think it did affect her PCS um, because she didn't necessarily deserve the highest uh, performance interpretation this time because she seemed a little more like jerky and on edge. So I guess for me, like the reason why she doesn't seem to have any issues with the freeze because she's been performing it literally since the beginning of summer. Like when you get used to having to like come back from mistakes on while well, you're in the middle of a spotlight and you're still doing triple axles in the middle of the off season, like it's easier to like get yourself into that mode even on a competitive ice where you're like okay I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do this and it's gonna be okay where she doesn't have all of that performing in the bank for her short so I think that's why her nerves get to her a little bit more there but yeah that free skate has really grown on me a lot I'm not gonna say I didn't like it but it, I didn't think it was like the most amazing thing I'd ever seen when I had first seen it but now I'm like yeah no this is incredible it's like piece of work like Tom Dixon you are my savior as always okay so next let's speak to Satoka Miyahara, our bronze medalist. She would have been second if she hadn't popped the, the triple flip in the free skate. Still so upset about it. But given how she struggled at Grand Prix final, this was definitely the confidence booster competition that she needed going into the spring because she was nailed on under rotations at Grand Prix final. And here she was really only called on the double loop combo in the free skate. And the rest of the jumps bar the triple lutz looked pretty good in real time. Yeah, the, the triple lutz was like under rotated in real time. I'm really surprised that they didn't call it. Yeah, with Satoko, you, she's always most comfortable when it seems like she's like... She's less focused, if that makes sense, because it seems like when she goes into jumps, sometimes she kind of gets into her own head and she starts rushing things. And that's why she has issues... Like on the solo Lutz where she's slipping off the takeoff, her axis gets weird and she's landing short and under rotating it completely. So like she's like one of the rare exceptions where you can look at her skater and you can be like, okay, but maybe like don't think about it as much as you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? But on the flip side, thank you judges for giving her 75 plus program component scores. Although, in my opinion, I really think that they could be higher still, especially in performance and composition. She should be getting 9.5 and above easily every time she steps on the ice. Just every time she steps on the ice, give her like 77 or 78 PCS. That's what I was about to say. I am on record as saying step on the ice, 37, 77 automatic. Don't even bother. Just throw it at her. I don't think this was the best performance that I've seen of hers, of her this, this whole season, and I think that this wouldn't have been the right place to give her the highest PCS. Well, this is a national competition, so I kind of expect there to be some score inflation anyway. But, like, in either case, she should handily be winning PCS among all the ladies in the world, hands down. Except for Carolina Costner. Even if she's not, like, performing to, like, her highest ability, like, she's still performing better than everybody else. Exactly. So, yeah. like, Satoko on an off day performance-wise is, like, basically all of the other ladies when they're on. And when they're, like, super on, on that one rare competition. Yeah, and it's, with that short program especially, that short program is just absolute majesty. It's so perfect. It's probably my favorite ladies short program this season. It might be my favorite program. Okay, um, now it's time for me to cry about my Mihara, who will never, ever win anything ever again. Seriously, what does Mai have to do to get 70 PCS or above? She got so close. She got 69 point something. That was just so mad. But, like, honestly, judges, tell me, what does she have to do? Does she have to she change to nationalities? My Mihara needs to fly. Or just become Canadian. Yeah, change nationalities, my Skate for Canada. Literally, if my had, like, performed these two programs at any other nationals outside of, like, Russian Nats, she would have won those competitions handily. Oh, no question about it. She just has, like, the worst luck in the world. Because she was third in both segments, and she finished fourth overall. And she was the only of the top four ladies to have two clean protocols. Like, I do understand part of the issue with my though, is that... I love her with all my heart, but her programs aren't really the best fit for her and aren't the best fit in, like, the current competitive landscape. Last season, Maya had, like, a great short program with Libertango. It took her a very long time to actually reach a point where she was performing it well, but it was great for her development, and its magic is such mm -hmm. a step back for her. She definitely needs to leave behind these more one-note programs and do programs have more intensity and more performance aspects to it and more modern she has a very like classical feel but I don't think 
that's what the judges are looking for right now. And honestly, she needs to stop working with David Wilson. Yeah, it's a pity because she has a very nice, soft, lyrical skating sk- style. But the programs are just so one note that it becomes very boring. I think that they need something that builds a little more. Or if yeah, not something that's completely different and out of left field just to shock the judges. Yeah, and honestly, what kind of compounds on the issue of her having like these sort of one note programs is the fact that JSF fails to reward her properly anyway, even at their own nationals, and they don't politic for her internationally, because as we all know, JSF can only politic for one skater at a time. And that's so just disheartening and unfortunate because she's already proven that she can compete against the top in the world and do very well. And the fact that they gave her four continents over Sato Gono shows that they know she's a serious contender for at least major medals, if not major titles. So it's just so bewildering and frankly embarrassing that they can't give her more support in her own country by just giving her the PCS that she should rightfully be getting. I don't understand it at all. Give her better assignments. Yeah, she's had such a stellar season so far, and she skated mostly clean, and she's probably been the most consistent of all of the Japanese ladies this season. Uh, but if you like look at her GOE and PCS growth over the past few seasons and compare them to the growth of the other Japanese ladies, hers has been mostly flat, while the other Japanese ladies have been rising, not as much as some of the other ladies internationally, but still have been on the rise. And I don't understand why. She was the first alternate to the Grand Prix Final, and now she's first alternate to Worlds. And with so much competition at the top within the Japanese ladies, Mai really needs to do something and cha- to change or change her style, um, improve some of her elements that she's weaker on, and just find a way that to break into that top three. Or else, I'm worried that she's just going to be the first alternate of Japanese ladies forever. That wouldn't be fun. But yeah, I agree with that. Like, also, like think about how different her season would have been if she had gotten like more favorable Grand Prix assignments. She could have gone to Grand Prix final. Yeah, she could have made the final easily and medaled, and like her whole season would have been different. Speaking to some of our other faves, Wakaba Higuchi. Woohoo! God, I just, I love her short program so much. It is so good. Especially, like, the part in the step sequence where she's, like, kind of marching in place and swinging her arms back and forth. Just thank you, Shaylin Bourne, for my life. Like, we were just complaining about how Mai's programs don't suit her at all. This is the polar opposite. Like, this program is so quirky and charming, and she sells it so well. Her smile! The way she, like, beams when she, like, does the hands around her head... It's the best. Yeah, it's such a unique program. Like, I haven't seen any other person with a program like this this season. And I'm just so happy that she had the opportunity to actually do it justice here at Nationals. Um, She looked like she was having so much fun with it as well. But Wakaba's team has to get rid of that triple flip in the short program. She always has been getting an edge call on it. And, like, at this point, it's not even, like, an unclear edge. She's just getting that edge call. Yeah, honestly, maybe, like, just ditch the flip entirely for a little bit, especially that now that she's injured like right now as she's injured like just put it off to the side save it for when you're healthy and you can work on it and maybe hopefully get it to where in a place where you can get like an unclear edge call instead of just a straight edge call every single time you do it but otherwise I love her to pieces like I hope she has a nice rest and like can come back next year and just kill it she had a great short program unfortunately had some issues in the free skate including Too many double toes, which seems to be the sponsor of Japanese nationals at this point. (laughs) But I think overall she performed pretty admirably given how long she was out with the injury. Like she was out of her second Grand Prix. So we haven't actually seen her compete since October. And even though she didn't get assigned to four continents or worlds, I don't think people were necessarily surprised by that. Because at least personally, I didn't anticipate that she would be getting any spring competitions unless she really knocked it out of the park here. But it is a shame that she won't be able to defend her silver medal at Worlds. Although, on the flip side, she's at least going to be able to take the time off that she needs to fully heal her injury, because it wasn't fully healed. I was going to say, I think she was definitely in a competitive state here, but I don't think she was fully healed, especially because her free skate, she seemed really labored, and like she was a bit lacking in energy, Although she did have a gorgeous layback spin at the end. 
um, I think she clearly wasn't fully up to snuff. Yeah, especially since, like, immediately after she pulled out of a nice show she was supposed to do. So we still we know that there's still problems with injury, and I hope she takes the rest of the season to fully heal to get back to being competition ready for next season. But all of that said, the Japanese ladies' field, like Ogita mentioned earlier, is so incredibly packed with consistent competitors who are delivering internationally that I really worry about Wakaba's chances for getting assignments in the future because coming off of her world silver last year, she really needed to take the first half of the season and strongly make a case for herself as a or the leading Japanese lady going into nationals to get onto the national team. And unfortunately, because she was injured, that didn't quite pan out for her. And so you can really see that the Japanese ladies field is starting to be separated into what I would call the world medal contenders, who are Satoko, Kaori, and Rika, and the quote-unquote B team, which is Mai and Wakaba. And the separation is just becoming clearer and clearer with every competition. And at this point, especially with so many juniors possibly moving up next season, I just don't know if they're going to be able to get into a spot where they can realistically contend for those spring competition spots. Especially since so many of the Japanese ladies are also, like, queens of consistency. When Wakaba is on, like, there's no doubt she's going to get really high scores and she's going to place really well, but she's not consistent. She doesn't always get the scores that she deserves when she's on. I would say that she doesn't get the scores she deserves, but she still places ahead of other Japanese ladies. So like last season, there were tons of issues with her not getting the PCS she deserves, most notably at Cup of China when she got second behind Alina Zagitova. I personally thought she should have won that. Like that's a good example of that. But she's still beating the Japanese, the other Japanese ladies. And that's where she should be. So even though, like, she's also getting low-balled on her PCS sometimes, so is everybody else. But, like, she's still, when she skates clean, she's still ahead of them, even though she's getting lower scores. Yeah, but she has, like, issues being consistent. And when faced with the choice of having, like, a really consistent Japanese lady versus Wakaba, I fear that jsf will lean towards a more consistent lady who they know will do really well regardless and will get them the spots for next season especially at worlds versus wakaba who they know when she does skate well she places above most of the japanese ladies but it's always a question of will she yeah this kind of goes back to what sam said on the rust nats episode about how this really is not the season to be messing around with world spots especially again with juniors coming up next season who are also going to be contending for spots in the world team and for spots in the world podium that they really and it's a home world so they really need to make sure they hang on to three spots and from their perspective it makes sense that they would be sending the most consistent skaters over the ones who can, yes, score very high, but if they have an off day, they can also be, like, buried. Well, let us move on to a Japanese lady who did not have the greatest time at Japanese Nationals this season. Marin Honda. Speaking of skaters who are getting left and left off the teams. Marin just continues to falter every time she makes a mistake. She hasn't had a good skate since her free skate at Skate Canada last season. And I'm seriously worried about her and her future competitiveness. So the thing about Marin that I, I worry about is that, I mean, we talked about it in the episode covering International de France. Uh, Tilda talked about the impact of scoring precedence and whether or not it can affect skaters' ability to bounce back or even perform at future competitions. And that's what I think has been happening to Marin because she starts out not bad, but she doesn't get great scores. And then she kind of falls apart and then it compounds and then by significantly into the season she isn't it seems like she doesn't even fully perform because part of her knows it's not going to get rewarded. I know some people have been saying that oh it's her move to RAF she'll get better soon but she's this has preceded her move to RAF and these issues aren't just going to magically go away. Yeah and this I would like to give not a shout out to JSF but a criticism of JSF here because Marin Honda is a former junior world champion. And so after she won junior worlds, JSF was kind of really hopping on the bandwagon and saying, you know, we're going to politic. We're going to put all of our energy into politicking for this one lady. And then when she didn't quite measure up, they kind of just left her in the dust. And you see this happen 
with the way that JSF promotes their skaters internationally, that they kind of put all their eggs in one basket. And then when it doesn't bear fruit, it's kind of like... It's like they're just looking for the next Mao. And as soon as someone doesn't start hitting those criteria right off the bat, they're like, and next. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to give a shout out to Ayaka Hosoda, who landed three clean triple axles at Japanese Nationals. She was going to retire after last season, but then she started practicing doing triple axles for fun with Rika, and then she did it. Um, I'm so happy that she decided to come back and perform here at Nationals because, honestly, her triumph here was probably the second biggest highlight of the ladies' event after Kaori's win. Um, And she's definitely proof that you can always learn something new, even if you've been in the sport for quite a while. It's the axle juice. On the other hand, landing three triple axles and still finishing eighth, hashtag just JNAT's things. Well, her other elements were not as good. Her spins, like, didn't get high levels and and her step sequence didn't either. But she had the jumps. Um, But I really wish that JSF would give her an international assignment so she could get that triple axle ratified. That would be great. Please and thank you. Speaking of other women that JSF isn't really taking care of, what is happening with Yuna Shiraiwa's assignments? Yeah, I just, I, I have, I have questions. And just, what the hell, JSF? What are you doing? That is the question. Why are we assigning her to Junior Worlds when she's been a senior for two seasons now? Especially since Mako Yamashita finished ahead of Yuna Shiraiwa at Senior Nationals and is the reigning Junior World Bronze Medalist and has a Grand Prix Silver, it's kind of a slap in the face to not send her. If you had especially to send since, one of them. Yeah. Especially since she's only 15. Like, she can still compete as a junior. I mean, so can Yuna, obviously, but Yuna's been out of juniors for a lot longer than Mako has. I don't understand. Okay, no, I do understand why they sent her, but at the same time, I don't understand because A, she hasn't even competed internationally as a junior this season, so she has to go to a junior event in the spring to even get the tech minimums that she needs. Yeah, she's going to have to like change her programs just to like fit the different requirements. Yes, yeah, she has to change the composition of her free skate, and she has to change her jump layout for the short. Yep. And obviously, you can kind of see where JSF was coming from with this because Yuna did have decent results on the Grand Prix, and the choice was obviously made with Japan's junior lady spots in mind, and she can probably crack top five, top six in juniors, and probably not going to make the podium. Realistically, I don't think any of the Japanese ladies are going to medal at Junior Worlds just because the Russians are too strong and their jump layouts are too crazy. But for Yuna, this does such a huge disservice to her growth and her trajectory as a senior lady because she's basically being demoted right now. They're saying, oh, well, you know, we've, we know that you've been representing Japan on the senior circuit for two seasons, but no, you're going to go back to juniors because we need to hang on to our spots. And it just really, really sucks for her. Why does JSF suck so much? Why do all feds suck so much? This is a question for... That we've had on many an occasion. Yeah, I, I just want Yuna to do well and be happy. And I hope that this doesn't turn into a major step back for her mentally. Hopefully this is a one-off thing and it doesn't happen again to her. But we can't stop JSF from making their decisions. And I just hope that she still gets to compete in a maybe a senior level B competition in the spring to keep up her status as a senior lady. She kept it going. Yep, all the way through. The head must have been spinning at what she was achieving, but she kept her focus. So our shout-out of the week goes to Fuji TV's ice scope, which we saw featured at Japanese National. So basically, it measured the height, distance, and speed of the skater's double or triple axles. It did measure Satoko's triplets, though. Yeah, they can measure other jumps. They just really focused on the axles for some reason. It kind of made me sad, honestly, that user wasn't there because I really wanted them to measure his triple axle. Ugh, next time. Next year, maybe. If he makes it to nationals. Are you going to curse Yuzuru making nationals this early, Kite? Well, no, this year. So it's not actually too early. Oh, God. Kite. It's still too early. It's always too early. So, thank you all for listening. We hope to see you again for our next episode, which will be about the European Championships. If you want to get in touch with us, then please feel free to contact us via our website, indolopodcast.com, or on Twitter, Tumblr, or Facebook. 
You can find our episodes on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. If you enjoy the show and want to help support the team, then please, please, please consider making a donation to us on our coffee page. And we'd also like to give a huge thank you to everyone who's contributed so far. You can find the links to all our social media pages and our coffee on the website. If you're listening on iTunes, please consider leaving a rating and a review if you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening. This has been Piped, Yogita, Sam, and Nina. Bye. See ya.